You go through three phases of life in the financial world. One's accumulation when you start putting money into accounts. Preservation is when it's grown to a large enough number that you now care about what's happening day by day, but you, the volatility is not as dangerous or does not as deadly. But eventually you get to distribution, and that's when the money has to come out, either by your design, your choice, or that of the IRS. That's when stuff gets complicated. And there's an awful lot of people, insurance companies and other places, that are going to do their best to convince you that you need to buy protection from what's called a distribution drawdown. What is that, and do you need that protection? Join us on Consider This Program today. Well, good morning and welcome back to Consider This Program. I'm your host, Joe Clark. And I'm Jamie Burton. Happy to have you along, Jamie. She is one of our senior advisors in Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, Happy to have her along with us. We are talking about something that is critical for people when it gets into retirement planning, and that is discussing what a drawdown is. Now, let's talk about these and and break them into two categories, Jamie. We talked about volatility a couple segments ago, but Mm -hmm. real quickly, what is volatility? So volatility is the swing in prices. The the roller coaster of the market, just going up and down. And what is a drawdown? Drawdown is um, when it's at a prior high and then goes down. That, and that is that is very very true. When you look at a um, uh, when you look at a bank account, for instance, mm-hmm. uh, unless you made a withdrawal, the value is never going to go down. Right. Right. If you had a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars in it, it's going to be a hundred thousand dollars plus whatever the interest was at the end of the quarter. Right. Right. Um, a drawdown in the marketplace is let's say you got a statement before um, the the before the pandemic hit in March of 2020, right? Right. And it said you had $100,000. And the next statement you got said you had 75000 Well, that was your drawdown, right? Now, if you've left the money in the market and it's been managed correctly, you probably have 120000 The market is actually higher than it was uh, where we were at the pandemic time, right? So now if it went down below 120000 now you would have that drawdown again. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that we watch very, very carefully as we manage, uh, at this point in time, a little over $650 million for families uh, across the country in 31 states. Um, Many of those families are taking income, right, pulling money out, whether it's to take care of their own standard of living or whether it's for charitable contributions. We're helping them make those distributions and, and managing that money. But a second part of a drawdown, though, to understand is that you're actually spending the dollar, right? So when a market, when, when you think about it being an accumulation and a market's going up and down, it's not that big of a deal as long as you're continuing to put money in. It can be frustrating and, and scary, right? right? When you're in preservation and you've got a million dollars now in the account, right, then that those drawdowns can kind of make your heart pitter patter, right? When you go through things like, you know, we did with the pandemic and, you know, my whole career, you know, Black Monday in 87, Mm -hmm. right? And the tech wreck and 08 and 09. And, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been an interesting 33 years. Um, But the point being, when you're in preservation, the market going up and down, as long as your heart can stand it is okay. Mm -hmm. The challenge is when you get into the distribution phase, when you pull a dollar out, it never gets to grow back up, mm-hmm. right? And I think this is where people really get confused. Um, we'll have people who come in and, and I, I show because I believe in a financial journey, not a one-hit wonder, right? So I have to show people per SEC rules and regulations, here's, what you are, here's where you are year to date, here's where you are over the last 12 months, here's where you are over the quarter. But I also show your whole financial journey, right? So we were able to buy, buy technology at the end of 08, you know, so you can look and see what your average return was f- from that point on, call it all net fees and expenses. And then you can look at the individual years. And I'm happy to go over that with you in the office and in terms of how it works uh, and why we do that, because it's critical to understand the journey. My point is this. We'll have people who come in and have a much higher average return than what I'm telling them they can safely take as a distribution. And it's all based on that concept of a drawdown. Right. Right. And you, you cannot if, it, if somebody talks to you about distribution and uses the word average return, I would run not a um, I, I, you might you don't even have to say goodbye. I mean, you'd <laughs> probably be polite, but, you know, you wouldn't want to really do that. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I hear people sell to try to play on your fear of running out of money, mm-hmm. Jamie, is is an annuity. What right. in the world is an annuity? 
So an annuity is a financial product that you are sold. So you put money into this financial product. You pay um, a percentage to get this guarantee that you would have um, a stream of income in the future when you decide to what's called annuitize this product. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing. So an annuity... I got to try to figure out how to put this in English for people who don't. I, if you think about a pension where you have a monthly check that comes in as long as you're alive, mm-hmm. that is an annuity that has been annuitized. You know, spell that one out real quick, right? <laughs> um, I, I, annuitization is, the, is when you exchange the asset for a future s- income stream where the, the insurance company is on the risk for you living too long. Right. That's right. the best way to think about it. Mm-hmm. Now, they get packaged in a lot of different ways. And, you know, this is year 33 in the in, in the industry for me. Um, I, I've taken care of well over 2000 families over that period of time, about 1200 families that we take care of currently. Uh, I have seen two contracts annuitized. Two. Right. Two. Um, because at the end of the day, what happens is people have $200,000 in an annuity or $400,000 in an annuity. I've seen more than a million in an annuity. And now it's time to take that guaranteed income. And people realize, you mean, if I give you this money, I don't get it back, right? right? And the answer is, that's correct. You don't, right? And so the insurance companies caught on to this. They recognize the same thing that I did. And so they got inventive and they created some extra um, bells and whistles, if you mm-hmm. will, right? Right. Um, so you have income riders that are on there where you don't have to annuitize and you can still take income. Uh, at the end of the day, when those are properly explained, when people come in off the radio that have heard me talk about this, and you're welcome to bring them in. We'll, we'll sit down and have a discussion with you over how the money works and, and teach you the, the areas that are in there. But um, most of the time, we stop those, those guaranteed income streams that are coming out um, because of the cost and expense that's in there. And mm-hmm. when people find out how much money they're really paying, remember the fiduciary focus, risk and volatility, fees and expenses. When people find out what they're really paying, uh, it is it is disheartening. It um, is, yes. Adam Harder is our chief investment officer. He's a CFA. Um, and unlike you who bought the annuity, most likely, um, we actually had an engineer that put a million dollars in a one for him and one for his wife. And brought in this, it's over a hundred page book you know, called a prospectus. Um, and Adam read every page and walked into my office and flung it on my desk and says, if a CFA can't figure out what this is, nobody else should be allowed to buy one. And that's where our bias really comes from. Um, so if you're thinking about an annuity, if drawdown scares you, and it is something that you need to be aware of, but if it's something that scares you, I put together a checklist. That said, if you're going to buy an annuity, here's the questions that you should ask. And if the person can't answer it, they probably shouldn't be selling it. And and don't let them give you, well, I'll have to get back to you on that. I mean, they should be able to answer those questions. And if you're going to buy it, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, you should be the one to be able to know what those questions are as well. So, all right. So we talked about drawdown. We talked about volatility. We talked about an annuity. Mm-hmm. So what exactly is market risk? So market risk is when you put your money into a market um, and then you're taking on the risk of the market going down and losing that money. When you need it. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. So volatility is when the market goes up and down and you don't need it. It doesn't matter. Right. So market risk is another word that you are hear, another phrase that you'll hear inside of, of what kind of risk is in there or that you have to deal with in your, in your planning. Right. Mm-hmm. So. When most of you are familiar with principal risk, right? Principal risk is the risk of not getting your principal back, right? Right. That's pretty basic, (laughs) right? I I put in $100,000. I want the $100,000 back. Right. I get it, right? Um, But there's really about 12 different risks to money. And one of them is market risk. Mm -hmm. One of them is liquidity risk. Right. And they affect all sorts of different types of portfolios that are there. So so let's just think about this on a drawdown. You're in the distribution phase, Jamie. You're mm-hmm. getting ready to take money out. Yes. Right. So the first per, first part of the fiduciary focus and Jamie and I are fiduciaries. Our whole company are um, by law. We have to treat your money as if it were our money and we were in a similar situation. Right. So I'm thinking through the eyes of you right now, not the eyes of myself. But you gave me a million dollars and said, Joe, don't lose the money. Right. Right. Don't lose the money. So 
if I put it in the marketplace, do I have a chance of losing the money? Yes. Absolutely, right? Yep. Because of risk and volatility, whether it's at whether it's stocks or whether it's bonds, there is a risk of it of something happening inside of that. Mm-hmm. Um, would there be fees and expenses on that million dollars? Yes. Yes. Now, here's a funny one. When people say, well, there's no there's no fee or expense at the bank. Um, yeah, there is. They get that back in by charging me higher interest to loan your money out. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> Taxes today and tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? So the money's going to either be taxed going in or taxed coming out or taxed along the way, right? Right. Real return is the one that gets me. And this is the one people miss inside of inflation. And it's the one that really, really concerns me when people get scared over a drawdown, which is real. Uh, they'll make silly mistakes. So let's go back and let's pretend it was 1980. You gave me a million dollars and said, Joe, don't lose the money. Now, I wasn't in the business yet, but I was still kind of paying attention to this stuff. I would have taken the million dollars, put it in a CD. You'd have got 14% interest and had $140,000 a year income, and life would be good. Yeah. 10 years later, <laughs> in 1990, I was in the business. You would show up and say, how'd we do? Well, here's your million dollars, right? I did my job. I didn't lose the money, and you had $140,000 income. And you go, that's great. But Joe, what in the world? My income's now 55000 because the interest rates had fallen from 14%, right, mm-hmm. down to 5.5%. Now, oh, well, this is, <laughs> this is what how, I lost. I lost two-thirds of my income virtually, and I still have my money. Yeah. And now play it out to 2020. So now you're looking yep. over a 40 year <laughs> period of time. Right. And you've got interest rates that are at two and you know two and a half percent in some cases and, and a lot less than that in other places. You still have you still protected the million dollars, but you got destroyed by inflation and purchasing power over all those years. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why Jamie and I talk about the fiduciary focus. It's why we want to make sure you understand the difference between accumulation and preservation and distribution, that your money will always have to exit a plan. Uh, at some point in time, somebody's got to take the money out. The IRS is going to force it to happen, and they're going to tax it, and you want to be able to control that journey and be able to navigate the stuff along the way. So if you want to know more, uh, you can go to our website at yourlifeafterwork.com. Uh, you can find more of these podcasts and radio shows anywhere you want to listen to podcasts podcast. Consider this program. Uh, you can get signed up for it. Go back and find segments at considerthisprogram.com uh, for for future information that you want to have on it or previous information that we've already done. But it's just a simpler way to go to your ne- yourlifeafterwork.com, click on Next Steps, get signed up for your complimentary meeting. You can sit down with Jamie or one of somebody on our team. And we will walk you through the things you need to consider today, the things you're going to want to consider in the future, and if we choose to partner together, what FEG will do for you, and we'll put it in writing. Yourlifeafterwork.com.